check out this stat from Sunday's game. It's from Next Gen Stats. The Seahawks gained 258 yards after the catch in that Week 10 victory over the Commanders. The second most yards after catch in a game of any offense this season. The Seahawks' four leading wide receivers each gained at least 40 yards after catch. We don't typically think, Bump, of the Seahawks as a team that does a lot of yards after catch. When I think of that, I think... Um, I don't know if Miami's doing it. I'm assuming just with the speed of their receivers that they're getting a lot of that. Yeah. Um, but also I think of San Francisco and I think of like really good offenses because what you're doing typically with yards after catch, unless you're breaking a ton of tackles, is creating plays that get the ball to guys in space. Right. And that's smart playmaking. So is that what you saw in this game? Did you just see guys breaking tackles? Did you just see like uh, mix-ups with coverage for Washington? Like, What do you think led to this kind of explosiveness for Seattle's offense? Because if they can do this every week, yeah, right. if you can tap into this kind of performance, which you won't every week, but if you could expand on yards after catch, that's huge. Yeah, um, Jackson Smith and Jigba leads the team yards after catch with 217. You got DK with 161, Lockett with 124, and then... Um, our guy, actually, Kendall Walker's number two with 178. Um, so, yeah, when yards after catch means that you are getting the football to your playmakers quickly. You're running screens. You're running quick game. You're getting the football out of Geno's hands early. That's something that everyone who watches the game is yelling, Geno, throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball, when sometimes it's a mid to deep concept. You can't throw the football. So when you're doing that, and Geno isn't really pressured that much. He was pressured a lot the game before who they play. Uh, Baltimore. Baltimore, 49% of the dropbacks. He's typically pressured around 22% of the time. Um, so, but when you are getting the pressure, that's how you uh, combat the pressures. You throw a quick game, you let these guys go. Um, if they can do that, I think that helps them. I wouldn't say if you just get the yards after catch going, um, you're good to go. Because when this team is at its best is when Geno's – Gino's uh, getting the play action and getting the red zone. Play action, red zone, and third downs. I think those are more indicators that your team is going to do well. But this right here, the yards after the catch, um, allows you to be explosive in a different way. The teams who lead the, the conference, or excuse me, the, the league yards after catch, you got the Chiefs, number one. You got the Washington Commanders at number two. You got Minnesota, number three, Miami, Chargers, and Detroit. So out of those one, two, three, four, five, six teams, I probably see one, two, three, maybe four playoff teams. Um, so I think it's good to have. And, and I think that the Hawks have the personnel to be good at that with JSN and with Ken Walker. Uh, DK is not really a yards after the catch type of, guy, type of guy. He's more of the 50 yards down the field over the shoulder type of dude. But no, I like it. I think it adds to your team. And um, when you do get that yak, that means the screen game is on point too. And last week was the first time the screen game looked even near decent. Uncle Will got one. JSN got one. DK got a smoke screen. And Lockett yeah. got one. I thought that pass to uh, Disley, if it's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, right at the gut. Um, I was I was nervous for a minute with that one. Uh, you mentioned, and this is the case for almost any quarterback, that Geno's better with uh, with play action. Why in particular, Geno? Um, I don't know. Some. Like, Pat Mahomes, I wouldn't say is better in play action. Pat Mahomes is better in half rollouts and sprints and down the field concepts. He, he can buy himself some time. I think it's, it's preference. It's just your quarterback. It's something in his DNA says, all right, I'm better um, during play action. I can influence the defense a bit more. Maybe visually it's better for him. You get the linebackers to bite up. You, you knock it over the top. But, um, no, Geno's just good that way. And uh, he needs to get back to that and get back to the red zone efficiency. How does he get back to it? Uh, it's, I mean, because that's a Shane Waldron thing, too. Exactly. You have to establish the run. Like I said yesterday, I want to see more gap schemes. I want to see more powers and traps when it comes to running the football. And I think that that's how you get the play action going. You're a legit threat to run the football. Right now, the Hawks are kind of a threat. After seeing Charbonnet last uh, last week do his thing, Ken Walker the past couple of weeks has been all right. But you don't look at this team and say, man, they're, they're a good running, running team. They're going to run the ball down your throat, and you got to prepare for that. No, so – it's setting it all up, man, and um, the offensive line has to sell it. The running back's got to sell it. Quarterback has to be a magician in the backfield, selling the play action. Aaron Rodgers is the best I've ever seen at with the play fake and play action. So there's a lot of things that go into it, but Shane just has to set it up. Why do you think you haven't seen some of the run concepts that you think the Seahawks excel with? I don't know. I think it's philosophy. I think um, – you know, Shane Waldron coming from the Rams, they were big on zones and jet sweeps. So when Shane came over, I go, look, we're going to see a lot of jet sweep looks. We're going to see a lot of zones. And initially we did. 
But I think that as you become a coordinator, you start to figure out things that you like and you start to look at your personnel and saying, these are the things that we need to lean on. So I think as the season goes along, man, if he's looking at what I'm looking at, and I'm sure he is, and he's spending way more time watching film than I do, he's going to see these gap schemes and be like, we should lean on that a bit more. And you can still jet sweep and run the gap schemes and all that. You can still run your zone, but sprinkling in a bit more. So I think we're watching – just like we watched Jason struggle at times, and now he's coming along, he's getting better. For a coordinator, it takes years. You you don't just hop on the scene and you get it automatically. You're equipped to call a game and to win some ball games, but you start to understand who you are and what your team needs. So you'd love to see more gap schemes or more yeah. power? Okay. More gap. Well, power is a gap scheme. So yeah. whenever, whenever you have linemen pulling, whenever you're telling your running back, this is where you're running the football through this gap okay. with a zone is kind of like, all right, this is where you start. And then you kind of figure it out. You kind of feel the flow. Yeah. So yeah, whenever you see guys pulling gap scheme.